once again, I want to welcome you to my program. I hope you've, you've enjoyed what I've sent you so far. And uh, there is more to come, like I promise you. But today I'll be looking at a very specific topic uh, taken from the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse uh, 11. Uh, where Paul was saying that uh, we should not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. If not, he's going to use it as an advantage against us as uh, followers of Christ. Uh, I see a lot of uh, situations whereby uh, we walk in uh, with our heads down in compromise because of uh, we don't understand the ways how Satan works or his devices when Paul said we should be careful of his devices. These are not things that are strange or far away in the heaven somewhere we can understand. These are basically something that we are used to. We see them day by day, every now and then often in our life. And uh, somehow we've, we, we've not really paid close attention to it. So it has become more detrimental to our daily lives and uh, our decision making in life as allowed, making us to make the wrong uh, decision most time. So I want to address it very quickly and one of those devices I'll be mentioning a very few points is that uh, Satan is not going to come straight to you to just throw things at you. First of all, the Sammy was, was saying, he said, uh, guide your heart with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life. In other words, from your heart everything happened in this world. And Jesus was warning us about that. He said, uh, what, what defies a man, what makes a man a sinner, is not what goes in, the food he eats and all those things, but what comes out of his mouth. In other words, before we, we speak, we've already thought of it in our heart, we've processed it in our heart, we've already embedded it before we say it out. Uh, before we go out there to commit all sorts of evil, we've already plotted it in our heart, we've done it in our heart. So Jesus was saying, no, it's not what goes inside of you, but what comes out of you, because you've already thought of it. For instance, when he was talking about uh, adultery, he said, look, or fornication, he said, when you look, uh, by sleeping with a woman, it's not when you've actually done the act. By just looking, your heart has already been making decisions. Should you, should you not? So we, that's why scripture really wants to say, we must guide our heart without diligence. And the enemy knows that. That's the reason why he goes after our heart, where the issues of our life is. So first thing this morning, uh, right now, I'm going to talk about uh, is how he attack this area of our life. Before we know it, we've given him everything, every authority we have. We've given it to him and he becomes a charge. He takes absolute control. Number one, you have to understand that Satan, Jesus describing with just, I mean, two words, the father of lies. So he is the father of, in him, everything about him is lies. There's nothing to it. So you need to have that at the back of your mind. It's not going to come to you with solutions. It's going to come to you in the form of light, but with a pack of life. We are wrapped as the best present ever to deceive you and to lead you astray. So first, it's targeting your mind. To make sure he close out your mind to the word of truth. And for him to do that, the devices he uses, or the instrument he uses, if we should put it very simply, is number one, turning your eyes away from the book or the Bible. He makes sure he attacks your mind with so much activities, you are so busy, you don't have time for the Word of God. And the Word of God is the manual of which we live by, if we really want to live in this world. So if you don't pay attention to that manual, you're so busy, you're so engaged, you're so that what you're not listening to is the news of the Word and all that. So it's, you're going to lead you astray. That's one device. Is taking you out of the things of God, that will be of interest between you and your God, you make sure he take away. And that first word of God, he will attack that very strongly. Make sure that it makes you lose interest. It will occupy you with television, video games, uh, gossip, social activities that's got nothing to do with the word of God. 
your job, your business, your family, your community, a whole lot of things. It will get you so much engaged that the Word of God becomes secondary to you. And when it does that, and it got you there, everything is just going to be a spiral. Number two, your prayer life. He's going to make sure he attacked that by discouraging you from praying, discouraging you from fasting, and discouraging you from not allowing you to see the purpose and the reason why you should pray or fast whenever you need to. And for him to do this, he tried to make you compromise to make you understand that you shouldn't believe that everything that is happening to you is from God or God is punishing you because of this and that and that. So you take your mind off. You make sure you are involved in so many religious activities, for instance. You go to church very regularly. You may even be going to a group and all that. But you find out your interest to pray regularly is no longer there. The interest to, to study the Word of God is no longer there. The interest to 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 really become part and part. You know, you have a personal time with your, with God. It's not there. So it, it takes your mind off. He attacks that. That's his devices. Discourage you from praying and from studying the Word of God. So your life begins to get weaker. You st- your mind starts getting weaker. You, you, you start compromising your spiritual mind. Number three. Laziness sets in. In fact, I think laziness should have been the first because it starts from there, throwing laziness at you. Suddenly you become lazy. Your mind, your interest is no longer on the things you used to be enthusiastic about, especially when it comes to your spiritual thing. You try to fill it up with physical things, things you see, to make sure you are so engrossed with those things that your mind is taken away from your fellowship with your father. These are his weapon he throws at you, his instrument. Get you occupied. Make your mind become lazy. And once your mind becomes lazy, you become dull. Your mind becomes dull. You, the, everything you do doesn't go in, doesn't sink in. Even if you study the word of God, you are doing it in a hurry. When you pray, it's in a hurry. You, you want to go. You're constantly on the go. That an instrument he throws at you. When he doesn't allow you to sit down to study and meditate, he constantly engages you that you don't have this time. When he does that, it's got you. Then suddenly, number five, you start looking for easy way out. And that is going to lead <laughs> to a whole lot of problems because the suggestion you'll be giving it to, you'll be giving to you, it will make you feel uh, don't you think you should do it this way? Don't you, you should do it that way? Remember, you used to pray before you make decisions. You used to study the word of God, you used to find out what is the mind of God regarding these issues. Suddenly you no longer pray, you know it depends on your intellect or it depends on the advice of the experts out there. Uh, you're seeking more solution on the internet instead of seeking solution from the Holy Ghost. Easy going, easy solutions. Get it done. Get it done now. And before you know it, you're compromising where you ought not to. Why? Because number one, you have let, you've neglected the four things you ought to do. Pray, fast, seek the face of the Lord, study the word of God. You're not doing that. So, your mind becomes an easy target for him. To throw things at you, to compromise. You no longer begin to see things the way they ought to be. From the righteous point of view, where you used to see. You still go to church. You still go to Bible study. You're still in a cell group. Every now and then you pray here and there. But that depth of, of love that you have is no longer there. And you understand what I'm talking about. You've become so busy, so cumbersome, doing the things of your dream, your widest dream, things you want to achieve. So you start to compromise, look for easy way out. Number six, you start buying into that suggestions that... Well, God understands. Um, he knows what I'm going through. He knows that times are hard. He knows that, I, 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 I mean, after all, he created the opportunity for me. That's why I'm so busy. That's why I'm Jesus and that and that. When you come back home, you slump on your chair, you're tired, you want to watch TV. You don't even have time for fellowship with your family anymore. 
You no longer cherish one another. You're just too caught up there with the day-to-day -day activities that God becomes secondary. And God does not like that. Remember, God wants to have a priority in your life, in my life. He wants to be the first, not the second. I did speak of that some time back if you check my old videos. So what do you do? You, 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 you still have that feeling. It gave you that feeling that you are still in Christ. You, you are still on the, on the journey. You are still working. But meanwhile, you are actually out of the way. You begin now to take ownership of those suggestions as if they are your own. The truth is, they are not yours because he is suggesting it to you and you are buying into it. And now you buy into it. You now receive it. You accept it thinking these are your suggestions. They are not yours. You are just compromising. You are taking what is known, you are making it yours. And making it as if you validate it and you take it to in and you start making, running with it. It's not yours. That's the suggestion of the devil. So, your mind becomes kana. Number seven, your mind becomes kana. When you now make decisions, it's now in the flesh, no longer in the spirit, because you no longer consult with God. You no longer consult with the Holy Spirit. This come your way. You look for solution out there. Friends, who can come to my rescue? You rush there, you rush there, you rush there. You're not hearing the voice of God anymore because that disconnection has taken place. And that's exactly what Satan wants. It cut off the line between you and your Creator. So you start to do things in your own way. And next thing it's going to use, it's going to do, you are now under pressure. Your kind of mind starts making decisions. Before you know it, you start doing things you never used to do. You start spending time at the bar, drinking, smoking, drinking, just to, to kill that voice inside of you. Some of you, it's women, from one sketch to another. Some of you, it's business. There is no ethics anymore. You, whatever comes your way, you take it. You just, you just get it. You don't care anymore. You get involved in corruption, all sorts of things. Why? Because... That void inside of you is getting bigger and bigger, and you need to fill it up. Instead of you going back to the basics of your Christianity, which is watch and pray, you are now trying to solve the problem by giving maybe big tithe to the church, offering to the church. And of course, those pastors who don't care, they, as long as they collect your offering, you become number one. You can still be a deacon in the church, or you can be even an associate pastor. Then you think you can buy your way out of God's uh, favor. No, it's not. The enemy has got you there. But your mind has it becomes kinder. You are not making decisions based on the flesh, not based on the guide of the Holy Spirit. You start getting spirit out of control. You no longer have control. Your family is not going in this area. Before you know, your wife is your problem. Your children is your problem. You take it out upon them. You 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 not believing. You start believing that this is it. The enemy has got your mind. Eventually, your mind dies. Your spirit man dies. The Holy Spirit find his way out of you, it goes, because you start grieving him. And sometimes subtle, you still believe you are in charge, you still believe you go to church, you give offering, you give time, you do this, you do that. But the truth is that deep down in you, you know you are dead in your spirit. There's no more life. And that's what Satan wants. The Bible said, he come in disguise seeking for whom he may kill and destroy. So he doesn't come with good intention. And he's not going to come and just make you feel as if this is evil, this is right. No, he will come with a pack of lies and give you that box of lies and you buy into it. And his final ultimate is to, to destroy you. So you have to understand when he throw these things at you, making you to, 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 to first of all, turn your eyes away. In fact, when you, when you neglect the word of God, a day, two, three, you are looking for trouble. And the symptom of the symptom of all this, knowing that you have fallen apart, is when the word of God you no longer find joy in it. You no longer find joy in, in, in praying. You no longer find joy in what you do with God. You should understand that you have compromised your work with Him, and that's exactly what Satan wants. And you don't want. That to happen. You want to go back to the Word of God. It's very simple. To overcome that, you need to come back to the Word of God. Don't say, no, I've gone too far. 
I cannot do this now. What can I do now? No. You see, God is a very patient God. Very patient. All you have to do is to come back as you are. Lord, I think I've blown it there. Not I think, I've blown it here. I need to come back. Again, for you to do that, you have to go back again to the Word of God. Studying the Word of God. Praying regularly. Seeking His face. Just do what you can just to get close to the Father. I mean, if you have children, they suddenly they cut you off, they used to phone you maybe once a week or twice or three times a week. Suddenly they are not calling you once a week. Suddenly, once a month, once a year. How do you feel? It's the same thing. To be in touch with your children, there has to be that regular contact wherever they are. For us to be in touch with God, there has to be that regular contact understanding of studying the word, praying, talking to him, having fellowship with him on a regular basis, not only on Sundays when we gather in the church, then on Monday to Friday or Saturday, we don't have no relationship with him. This is the enemy's handwork, his devices to turn our eyes away from the word of God. So let's go back to the basics. We cannot do without the word of God. And let us not wait only on Sunday, waiting for the pastor or the bishop to give us the word. For what has happened in this world right now, the coronavirus is spreading all over the place. I think for me, it's, it allows us to go back to God and have one-on-one -on -one fellowship with Him. To be a better Christian. Because I bet you when we come out of this, we have to be a better Christian. It's not going to be business as usual. We're not going to continue to live as usual. We have to be aware of the, the compromise. We have to be aware of the stones that the enemy throw at us. Now, first of all, is to attack our spirit mind by taking our interest and our love for God away from His Word. And when He does that, it takes our mind away, everything has just follow. And once everything has followed, our lives are going downhill. And once they start going downhill, the kind of man takes control. And once the kind of man takes control, we start making decisions from the kind of mind. And the kind of mind, the Bible said, it leads to destruction. So let us, let us be wise. And as we get out of this whole problem that's going on around the world, we'll be a better Christian. So let's spend more time in the world. A personal fellowship with him and as we do this the Spirit of God will begin to guide us and lead us to the path of righteousness righteousness shouldn't be a thing of struggle it should be a thing that, that we are being led by the Spirit of God through his word that navigate us through our path of righteousness working with God it, it, it's it, it's not as difficult as we Satan want to make it to be Oftentimes, it's because we don't hear his voice because we refuse to stay on the Word of God. So it's important to know that we are on a journey. And this journey, we need that manual to guide us through this journey. Until we reach that, until we reach that level, let's not compromise our faith with the person I call our opposition, which is the devil. Let's compromise our faith with God and let's walk with Him. Remember, I'm sharing this with you out of love and I know that uh, God loves you more, of course. Please, uh, as you listen and it blesses you, give it a thumbs up, subscribe so that when we publish, you'll be the first to receive it. And also share. That's what the Bible commands us to do. Go out there and share the Word of God. After you have finished, share it in your group, on your Facebook page, repost it, share it on your Twitter page, wherever, as long as it can reach out. Because you don't know who is going to be blessed through this world. Maybe to you, it may make no sense to you, but you never know who is going to make sense to you. Remember the word of God, it goes and dividing asunder. So God bless you. Keep listening. And don't forget to share. Bye-bye.